so this was one of the very first exhibition projects that I did on a large scale. Uh, and it was called, Is It Possible to Make a Photograph of New Jersey Regardless of Where You Are in the World? And this is the, <laughs> the space that it was hosted by, um, which was this really unusual kind of regional art center um, in New Jersey called the Piero Gallery. So it's half a community center, and then they have, like, you, you know, so you walk in and people are playing basketball outside, and it's got this very kind of relaxed atmosphere, and then you walk upstairs and there's um, suddenly an art gallery, and it almost makes no sense, and especially in an American context, there aren't so many spaces that function this way. Um, and so they had invited me to do a project. Um, and so I, um, and this is kind of an installation view, so you can start to see what the work itself ended up looking like in this space. Um, and this is a catalog that we produced to go along with the show. So my concept for the uh, exhibition, I started from really thinking about how a Google image search functions. And this is, in fact, a, a Google image search for the words New Jersey. Um, and since, you know, in an American context, this, the idea of New Jersey really registers in this certain way where there are a lot of kind of jokes about it. It's kind of known maybe on a more international scale through things like The Sopranos, this television show, or it's kind of got this sort of interesting, <laughs> funny um, kind of collection of, of ideas about what this place is that maybe aren't always so flattering. Um, and so I kind of wanted to start um, to kind of I don't know, I, I was thinking like, how could you take something like a Google image search, right, which just aggregates all of these kind of different views of something by all these different people and turn that into an exhibition and turn that into a meaningful viewing experience. So I came up with this kind of crazy question, is it possible to make a photograph of New Jersey regardless of where you are in the world? Um, and uh, so I made an open call for work, and because I work online, um, I, all I had to do was post this announcement that I was making this exhibition online, and suddenly I was flooded with submissions. So um, in the end, there were over 1,000 images in the show from 189 photographers from 18 countries around the world. And the rules were that you just had to respond to the question at hand, and I accepted literally every single submission um, that I got into the exhibition itself. Um, and uh, the American press, which is not often um, putting art, stories about art on the front page, um, got a hold of this idea before the exhibition opened. So this is like the leading newspaper um, in New Jersey, kind of um, publishing this as its, kind of, its, um, its front page, which was really a shock to me when I walked to the newsstand and, and took a look. Um, but this idea kind of really resonated with people, and that was really um, exciting for me. So this is just to give a sense of kind of some of the breadth of the work that came. This was the very first image that I received in response to this open call. Uh, and it was from someone who is based here in the Netherlands. And uh, it, I mean, I had emailed this kind of, you know, crazy request out to people, and I maybe got this image back 15 minutes after I had sent this initial email. So this idea that an artist could respond so quickly to this kind of proposal for an exhibition really sort of astonished me. Um, and they said something along the lines of like, you know, this is my view of, of New Jersey, which is of course a Google image search um, for New Jersey, because this was the person's way of kind of mediating this question. I mean, for me, the question itself was really a chance to start to think about um, you know, how has globalization changed our ideas about what, what is place, what is context, but also what is representation, what is a photograph, what does it tell us? Um, this is a, someone sent in a bunch of um, Google searched images for a New Jersey pizza. <laughs> Um, this was a kind of more conceptual project where uh, I was an art student at the time getting his MFA and he, um, this is the outline of the shape of the state of New Jersey that he's taped down with wire and uh, blasting on this kind of makeshift stereo setup is um, a, a Bruce Springsteen song, Born to Run, who, he was from, from New Jersey. Um, and, then, and then it really run, ran the gamut. So this was kind of the other side of the kinds of things that people were sending. Uh, this is like someone saying, oh, here's my like, touristic snapshot photograph of my time in New Jersey. Um, but was, oh, here's another kind of more conceptual bent. This is, um, it's playing off Ed Ruscha's work. Uh, I was a student at CalArts at the time, um, and the Slippery When Wet reference is to a Bon Jovi album, and Bon Jovi is also very notoriously from New Jersey. Um, but what I loved about doing a show like this, in fact, was that it really kind of engaged 
like really conceptual artworks that really grappled with this question in interesting ways, you know, and then like housewives from New Jersey sending me snapshots of like their kids or their pets. So it really created this interesting framework in which all of these things could not only make sense together, but like it was the accumulation of them was precisely what became really interesting. Um, and, and I think that's a lot of how the internet itself works. If, in case you can't tell, this is a woman perched between a Porsche and an SUV um, using the restroom. <laughs> Uh, and we made a book to go along with it. Um, and the whole idea about how the show was laid out and how the book was laid out was to pay attention to the kind of metadata as opposed to the kind of traditional um, choices that a curator would make about what looks good next to one another. Um, so we really tried to use this more informational context. And um, what I'm showing you here is, um, of course, because many of the artists who participated couldn't attend. They were in many countries far away. Um, this was a, a guy who was in Denmark, and I had mailed him a catalog, and uh, you know, like a day later, he wrote back, and he had sent me like 200 images of this. This is the catalog placed in his daily life, so he kind of wanted to show this experience of kind of how this had become meaningful to him. Um, and then this is a, I don't really have time to go into this one, but just to introduce one kind of more idea about how we can think about the kind of translation between uh, digital space and, and real life space or, or exhibitions in a more traditional sense. This is a project called In Real Life that I did um, in New York at a place called Capricious. Um, and it was really a, a show that was quite interested in, you know, so these are all the websites that participated. I invited a handful of websites that I really admired um, to kind of be in company with me, to kind of come into physical space and perform the kinds of things that, um, you know, we do sort of behind the other side of the screen that no one sees, to sort of what would happen if we performed that in physical space. And we made that a kind of context for um, people to kind of come. This was a panel discussion we had that was really um, well attended and brought up really a lot of interesting questions. Um, around what it means to kind of work in online space and then bring it into physical space. And then I'm not, I don't really have time to go into it for you, but just to give you a sense of all the different projects that the various websites kind of organized around this idea. Um, and I guess, you know, I'll just end by saying that the, the most important thing for me as someone who's kind of going between this offline and online context all the time uh, is that, you know, physical space and what happens in it and what happens when we have these kind of conferences and face-to-face -face encounters is actually really different than what happens online. Um, and the way that a public is created um, online is a really different matter. And for me, it's really interesting to kind of, oops, this is another project entirely that I'm not even going to try and introduce um, because I'm running out of time. No, I've already run over time. <laughs> uh, but just to say that I think the online and the offline are two very complementary modes, that one is not meant to replace one another, but in the future, what I would love to see is if more traditional curators or more traditional institutions could kind of really take up some of the proposals that the online presents and think about how to interestingly incorporate that into what they do. Thank you very much.